Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to solve exponential equations. And there's actually two methods to solving these. And we're going to start by, sh I'm going to start by showing you the first method. The first method is pretty easy. It just involves a lot of steps. The second method doesn't involve as many steps. It just involves more thinking. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. So the first method, the easier method, is just to, when we go to solve an exponential equation, that is when we have a variable that is an exponent, we want to start by taking the, well, first off, we want to make sure the base is by itself. And once the base is by itself, and the base is the number that the variable or the exponent is attached to, so sometimes if I had like 2 times 5 to the x power, I'd want to divide both sides by 2 to get the 5 to the x power by itself. But once the base is by itself, then what we're going to do is we're going to take the logarithm of both sides. Because remember with an equation, you can do anything to an equation as long as you do the same thing to both sides of the equation. So we can take the log of both sides. And remember from the previous video, one of the properties said that if we have a um, exponent for a value, we could take that exponent and put it in front of the logarithm. So that's what I'm going to do with the x. So it would be x times the log of 5 equals the log of 46. And now to solve for x, we're going to divide both sides by the log of 5 to get x equals the log of 46 divided by the log of 5. Now this would be the only way that this method that I just showed you would be the only way that we could get our answer if we did not have a TI Inspire calculator. And you'll see why I say that here in a minute. But if you're working with a scientific calculator, this is the method you'd, you'd want to use. And then lastly, we would take, to figure this out, we would take the log of 46 divided by the log of 5, and you get your answer then of approximately, if we round it to the four decimal place, it would be 2.3789. That would be your answer. Now, the second method, which again is going to involve a lot less steps, but it starts by requiring us to think a little bit more. It still requires us to make sure that we have the base by itself, so 5 to the x power is by itself. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put this directly into log form. In other words, we're going to take the log. Our base in our equation is 5, so it's going to be the log base 5 of our value, which is 46, equals our exponent, which is x. Now, if you have a TI Inspire, you could just put this directly in your calculator. Because as soon as you hit the log button, remember it asks you for what the base is. So you can put the base in as 5, put our value in as 46, hit enter, and when you do, you get the same answer of 2.3789. Now, if you don't have a TI Inspire, technically there is a way to work around it, which you'll see in a little bit. But otherwise, if you don't have a TI Inspire, oftentimes it's just easier just to take the log of both sides. And even if you did have a TI Inspire, if you prefer that other method, you could do it that way too. So why don't you guys go ahead and work out this next one on your own. Again, you can use either method of your choice, as long as you show your work. And so why don't you pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. Okay, let's see how you did here. So you should start by, well, if you did the first method, you would start by taking the log of both sides. So you'd have the log of 2 to the x power equals the log of 20. And again, that x would be the, uh, we could park that x in front of our logarithm here. And then after doing that, we could take and divide both sides by log of 2 to get the x by itself, which would give us an uh, approximately 4.3219 as our answer. Or there would be another way you could do this. You could put it directly into log form. So you'd have a log. Your base for your log would be your 2. Your value would be the 20. And all logarithms equal exponents. So it's going to equal your exponent of x. Type it in your calculator. You get the same answer of 4.3219. Let's look at a story problem. A family has $34,500 in a savings account that is paying an interest at a rate of 0.71%. If the interest is compounded continuously, how long will it take to grow to $40,000? So here we have a situation where we see that phrase compound continuously, meaning that we're going to use PERT, where our principal amount is a 34500 Our value for E, remember that's not a valuable, 
variable, that's our um, E button on our calculator, which is 2.71828. And then our exponent's going to be our rate, which our rate to 0.71%, if I change that to a decimal, is 0 0.0071. Times our time, and the time is what we're trying to figure out here. We're trying to figure out how long it would take for us to reach our answer, which is $40,000, or to reach our total of $40,000. So like I mentioned before in, in the previous examples, we always want to make sure that we get the base by itself. The base here is just the E, because that exponent only applies to the E. So I want to get that E by itself by dividing both sides by 34,500. So when I do that, when I take 40,000 divided by 34,500, we get approximately 1.159. Now, just like we did in the previous examples, there's two ways you could solve this. I'm going to show you the first way. The first way would be to take the natural log of both sides. Since our base here is E, I want to take the natural log of both sides. And you'll see why here in a second. So I'm going to take the natural log of E to the 0 0.0071. Oops, I forgot my 1 in the previous part. So it'll be times t equals the natural log of 1.159. Now, for this one over here, if I take and put that in front, I'm going to have 0 0.0071 times t times the natural log of e equals, again, the natural log of 1.159. Now, the reason why we took the natural log of both sides is because of this right here. The natural log of E is 1. And the reason why, if you're wondering, well, how do I know it's 1? Natural log, your base is a lot, or it's a lot, really a logarithm with base E. Remember, when this base and this base are the same, when we don't have an exponent, your answer is always 1. That's one of the properties that we did in that previous video. So really, this is 1. So 1 times a 0 0.0071 uh, 0 0.0071 times t is not going to have any impact. So to solve for t, I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.0071. So t would equal the natural log of 1.159 divided by 0 0.0071. And when you do that on your calculator, you get your final answer of about 20.8. So 20.8 years is how long it would take for your $34,500 to grow to be $40,000. Now, going back to what we had at this step, we could have done it a different way. We could have taken the log, of, instead of putting, taking the log or the natural log of both sides, I could put this in logarithm form. Remember, my base is E, so it's going to be the natural log of our value, 1.159, equals our exponent, which is 0 .00, whoops, 0 0.0071 times T. So to figure out what t is, or divide both sides by 0 0.0071, which gets me what I had here. So either way you do it, you're going to end up with the same answer of 20.8. So if at this, after you get the base by itself, if you want to take the natural log of both sides and do it that way, you can. Or once you get the base by itself, if you want to put it in natural log form, you can do it that way as well. So why don't you guys try this next one on your own. You want to figure out how long it would take $10,000 to grow to $15,000 if it's in a savings account that pays 2.59% interest compounding continuously. So why don't you guys go ahead and set that one up and then solve to figure out your time here. So pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check your answer. Okay, let's see how you did here. First off, you should have put it in this form. So you put it in PERT. So your principal is 10000 times E. Your exponent, your rate, the 2.59%, you want to make sure you change that properly to a decimal, which would be 0 0.0259 times your time. You want to figure out how long it would take for it to reach $15,000, so your total is 15000 So again, you want to get your base, which is the E by itself, by dividing both sides by 10000 to get 1.5 on the right side. And at this point, again, there's two different methods that we could use. Uh, so let's use the first method, which would be to take the natural log of both sides, if you chose to do it that way. So if you take the natural log of both sides, I did two steps in one. If I take the natural log of both sides, remember this is going to become my ex or this exponent I'm going to put in front of my natural logarithm. And now, to get the t by itself, remember the natural log of e is 1. So I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.0259, which
When you do that, you get your answer of 15.7 years. Now remember, at this step here, after getting the base by itself, there is another method that I could use to solve and get 15.7. That's to use a logarithm form. So since our base is e, we're going to take the natural log instead of 1.5, equaling our exponent, which is 0 0.0259 times t. Divide both sides by 0 0.0259, and just like we did before, we get the same answer of 15.7. Now let's talk about half-lives. Half-lives can be kind of tricky. Half-lives are always going to be in the form of an exponential equation. So it's going to be in the form y equals your initial amount, which would be a, times your growth rate, which would be b, to some exponent n. Now when we're dealing with half-lives, your growth rate is always going to be 1 half. And n represents the number of half-lives. Now, a lot of times, they don't tell me, they're not going to tell you how many half-lives have gone by. Instead, they're going to figure out, they're going to ask you how many, how much would be left after 3,000 years. So instead of saying how much is left after seven half-lives, they're going to say how much is left after 3,000 years. In which case, we have to approach this formula a different way. It's still going to be your initial amount times one-half, but your exponent is going to be the number of years, t, divided by the number of years in a half-life. So let's say, um, let's use a different letter. Let's use x, where x represents the number of years in one half-life. So here's what I mean. Carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,730 years. From this assumption, find the approximate age of a skull, find an ar archaeologist if the skull has 67% of its original carbon-14. So now we know, we know the total is going to be 67% of the original amount. So this one, we're gonna, we don't know the actual amounts here. We're working with the percentages. So my value for y is going to be 0.67, so that's how much is left after a period of time. Our initial amount, we're going to assume that we started out with 100% of our value. So 100% as a decimal is just 1. So if you want to put 1 in, you can, but really 1 times our answer here is not going to have any impact, so you don't need it. It's not required. But your growth rate for half-life is always 1 half. And we don't know. We want to try to figure out the age of this skull approximately. So the time is what we're trying to figure out. We do know that the number of years in a half-life, and this for carbon-14, is 5,730. So we're going to have t divided by 5,730 as your exponent. So now this is an exponential equation, so our base is already by itself. So just for ease here, I'm just going to write this in uh, logarithm form. Again, you could take the logarithm of both sides, or you could write this in logarithm form since the base is by itself. So that's all I'm going to do with this problem. So our base is going to be 1 half, or 0.5, times our value, which is 0.67, equals our exponent, which is t, divided by 5,730. So to figure out what t is, we're going to multiply both sides by 5,730. So it will be times a log of one log base 1 half of 0.67. And when you do that on your calculator, you're going to get an answer of approximately 3,000 310 years old is how old that skull would have been. Now again, we could have done that same process by taking the logarithm both, by both sides, but I think you've seen that process enough to know that either method works. So it all depends on how you want to set it up. So why don't you guys try this one? So this time, we're dealing with potassium-40 that has a half-life of approximately 1.5 billion years. And you can leave this in terms of billion years. So you can leave that as one and a half. Make this decay suitable for dating the oldest rocks on Earth. If 35% of the potassium-40 found in a rock has decayed to argon, about how old is a rock? Now, notice something that's different from this problem compared to the previous problem. The previous problem, we knew that there was 67% uh, that was left, that, or 67% was remaining of the original amount. Here it's saying 35% of it has decayed, so we have to actually change that to figure out how much remains. So if you take 100% of the 
minus 35%, you get 65% that remains. That's what we're always going to be using as our value for y. So this one, they're trying to be a little bit tricky. So I want to make sure I point that out to you before you try this one on your own. So now instead of using the 35%, we're going to be using the 65% that's going to remain. Um, you got to figure out how much would be, how long it would take for it to decay to be 65% or that you have left. So why don't you guys go ahead and pause the video at this point now and work this one out and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. Okay, so let's start out with what you how you should have set it up. So you should have set it up like this, where 0.65 is your total. Now again, you could use either method by taking the log of both sides or putting in this a logarithm form. I prefer putting it in logarithm form. It just requires less work. So it's going to be the log of your base, which is 1 half of your value, which is 0.65, equals your exponent, which is t divided by 1.5. So to solve for t, we'd multiply both sides by 1 and a half, which gives you your answer of 0.932. Now this is in billions of years, so you could have had it as 9.932 billion, or you could have written it as 932 million years old. Either answer would be fine. Now, if you were working through this video and you do not have a TI-inspired calculator, some of the stuff as far as you might think, well, man, this really sucks that I have to take, I want to do the fast way of getting directly to my answer without having to take the logarithm of both sides, but I don't have a TI Inspire where I could change the base. Well, there is a workaround, and it's called the change of base theorem. And here's what it tells us. If you're trying to simplify something that's in this form, log base B of A, and you don't have a TI Inspire calculator, what you can do is you can change the base, or you can use this change of base theorem to be the log of really any base. So we're going to use log of base 10, so that's what makes the most sense, of A divided by the log of B. So that's a change of base theorem. So if you have a scientific calculator, scientific calculator is automatically programmed to have to be common logarithms. They don't let you change the base. So if I had something like this that I was trying to simplify on a scientific calculator, before this point, you couldn't do it. Where now, you could take the log of your original value, which would be 8, divide by the common log of 7, and that would give you the same answer. So let's look at these last two examples here. So let's do log base 5 of 71. Again, we're going to round this to the nearest, uh, actually, we're going to round this to the nearest uh, hundreds. We're not going to round it to the nearest millionth. That's just too far. But if you didn't have a TI Inspire, you would have to do it this way. We would just take the log of 71 divided by the log of 5. And even if you do have a TI Inspire, I want you to go ahead and try it this way on your calculator so you can see how to do this because you never know. You could be taking a test where your batteries die and you have to use a scientific calculator because maybe a TI Inspire is not available. So you want to make sure that you know this little workaround to be able to simplify a problem like this. So again, you just take the log of 71 divided by the log of 5, which gives us approximately 2.65 if we round to the nearest hundreds place. That would be your answer. So I want you guys to try this last one on your own. So real quickly, take the log base 12 of 600. So go ahead and simplify that one with your scientific calculator. Or if you have a TI Inspire calculator, I still want you to use this change of base theorem so you can see how it's done. So pause the video and play when you're ready to check your answer, but you may already have this answer already done. So let's see how you did. So again, you should set it up like this. So it should be the log of 600 divided by the log of your base, which is 12. And when you do that on your calculator, you end up getting 2.57 if you round to the nearest hundreds place, or 2.574 if you round to the nearest thousands place like they ask you to. So there you have it. There's a lot of information there, but that is all you need to know. The most important parts are knowing this change of base theorem. And knowing when you're solving an exponential equation, you have two cho choices. You could take the log of both sides or put it directly into logarithm form. And now you know that if you have a scientific calculator and if you put it in logarithm form, you know how you can get that answer now without having to use a TI Inspire. So with that, good luck now as you work on your assignment.